Hello, and you are listening to Half Hour History, the show where you might learn something, but we guarantee nothing. I'm Jacinta. I'm Luke. And this time, we're talking about... Moondyne Joe! Oh, fuck. I'm so excited about this one because it's about a bush ranger... And they are the heroes of Australia, little battlers, go out, shoot people, take the money. Yep. Because of society. Yes, 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 yes. It really does help uh, if you're a bush ranger, particularly if you're you're Irish and you hate the police. That seems to be a really uh, long-running thread with bush rangers. More on the East Coast. It wasn't quite Moondyne Joe's MO, but on the East Coast, if you were Irish and hated the police, then you were uh, an Australian hero. Now, if you were Irish yes. and a bushranger, yes. I would assume that you would have a shock of red hair and therefore would be a bushranger. Maybe. Yeah. None of the... I think maybe... I don't think I think Ben Hall had lighter hair, but I think he was born here, so he wasn't actually... Uh, he may have been of Irish descent. Did Ned Kelly wear that big thing to hide the ginger bush? No, I think he had. Uh, I think he had dark hair. He's mm. really ugly, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we make joke had make jokes uh, on this podcast unsuccessfully sometimes uh, about it being haunted, a haunted podcast. We yes. have had uh, visits from Prince Eddie uh, opening the doors. You have you've had subsequent visits from Prince Eddie, yes? I did. There was an evening I was here um, working, and the door, which it was locked, the button was in the locked position, mm. um, just opened again crazy so and, I'm pretty uh, sure that was print the ghost of Prince Eddie yeah and after our last um Korean nose dick episode what happened to you I got a runny nose yeah which we know is a clear indication that um a two-dicked ghost thinks that my lovely nostrils are too welcoming uh lady parts yeah yeah so that's uh look we're not having the best run but, no. I mean, you know, if Moondyne Joe comes and uh, haunts your house, like, as far as ghosts go, he's not that bad. It's a tourist attraction, mate. I'll, yeah. I'll set up tickets. Come and yes. see the ghost Bush Ranger. And the ghost uh, Bring Royal. Bring kids. And the ghost uh, Princely Dick Nosefucker. Yeah. 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 I mean, Jesus, we're setting up our own tourist attraction here. Half well, Hour History. Uh, buy your tickets here. Half Hour History Spooky House. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we should start We should start branding right now. Um, it's the Half or, Haunted House. H-H-H. Yeah, yeah, good, good. I mean, there's no... It is only Half Haunted because there's no, like, you know, di- no direwolves. Or that we know of. No, no ghosts of direwolves. Mm. But we're in the wrong area for that. Well, it's, that's very true. Yeah. Uh, shall we, shall we uh, get on? Shall I'm we get on with it? I'm ready to learn. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't okay. have any notes. I haven't done any research. All I know is I'm very interested in bush rangers at the moment. Okay. Because I play one on uh, the Dungeons & Drongos podcast. I play the famed uh, Fantasy Australia bush ranger, Methface. So, oh, he's a bush ranger. Okay. He's a bush ranger. I just thought he was just a meth addict. Well, yeah, but he's a bush <laughs> ranger too. Because he ranges the bushes. Okay. He ranges the bushes. Yeah. He holds people up. He says, stand and deliver, you dickhead. So yeah. I, I want to know about a real West Australian bush ranger. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, Joseph Belitho Johns was born probably in 1826, probably in February, probably in Cornwall. Who knows? Not the internet and not fucking me. Or me. Yeah, his dad was a uh, a blacksmith, and his family was poor as shit. And after his dad died, uh, eventually he ended up in Wales as an iron ore miner, which really sounds like a bullshit life. We're not talking about like when when um, Pinocchio and Geppetto ended up in Wales. No, 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 no. Like the country of Wales, full of Welsh Gosh. sheep, I guess. What do you reckon's worse? Um, not sure, but they eventually escaped the whale, didn't they? Yeah, well, yeah. which is more than can be said for a lot of Welsh people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe the whale okay. is better. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a story, isn't it? <laughs> it is a story. Uh, on the 15th of November in 1848, when he was probably 22, Joe and his mate William Cross were arrested by a copper who was uh, sus of the fact that they were out on the road by themselves at 2.30am in the morning. That's pretty suspect. They're pretty sus. He asked them a few questions and he thought their answers were bullshit. So he opened up their bags and found several cheeses, 
Oh, the great cheese heist. <laughs> Three loaves of bread, one partly eaten, two pieces of bacon, part of a shoulder of mutton, and a piece of uh, suet, or sue, which is hard animal fat. And mm. two subway uniforms. Yes. And two badges that said sandwich arts. <laughs> uh, the policeman arrested them just on suspicion of theft, which kind of sounds shady as. You can't trust those police. But... Two people shouldn't have three cheeses. Yeah. It just doesn't add up. Exactly. Uh, but then two days later, it was discovered that those exact items were stolen from a house in the area. Now, people might not be aware of this from people from other countries, but... Yes. The, the sort of whole defence of a lot of uh, Australians about the convicts of the past mm. is that all these people, they weren't rapists or murderers or anything like that. Mm. They stole a loaf of bread. He literally stole three loaves of bread. And three cheeses. And three cheeses and some like, bacon. This just sounds like me playing Skyrim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the poor guy just wanted to make a sandwich. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, 2.30 in the morning when that hunger strikes. I know. Like, he's just looking for a nice tasty kebab. Yeah, you, yeah. And he's even willing to make it himself. There were no 24-hour McDonald's no, at this point. No, no. Like, I think he's being really unfairly um, uh, profiled there. So that house that he stole all the shit from was owned by a guy called Dick Price. So they stole from Dick and they got nicked. They got nicked by stealing from Dick. Yeah. Do you reckon they did that thing where the cop was like, I smell bacon, and they were like, oh, we smell bacon too. <laughs> and then they like laughed and nudged each other. That probably didn't help their case. No, probably not. And that's probably why they got uh, got arrested in the first place. So Dick Price. They both pleaded not guilty, even though they had a bag full of stolen shit. Um, and They had Dick's shit. They, they had did, Dick's bag. They did have Dick's bag of shit. They had um, Dick all over their faces and their breasts. They probably had Dick breath. Sure. From like, eating Dick's shit. Yep. Yep. Uh, The newspaper reports of their trial uh, suggested that the pair gave an unexpectedly spirited defense. Uh, They stole a pair as well. Yeah, well, according to this. (laughs) But that uh, Joey Jojo was abrasive and contravened the conventions of court procedure. So the 10-year sentence that they received may or may not have been a result of Joe acting like a total bag of tits. (laughs) <laughs> Given that for several uh, several other cases brought before the same judge on the same day... That is a real charge in Australia as well, acting like a bag of tits. Yeah, so guilty pleas to very similar charges resulted in sentences ranging from three weeks to three months. But these guys got ten years because yeah. they were being shitheads. Don't be a shithead, kids. We've got to jail for ten years. Well, they'd steal a lot of cheese, let's be fair. Well, yeah, yeah. So, Joey and his mate Willie Cross were punted from... Uh, Dick pr- Price, Willie, Willie Cross. Cross. Yeah, look, guys, there's not a lot of uh, penis content in this one, so I really had to uh, to do the best I could with what I had. Uh, so, they punted from prison to prison over the next little while, um, ending up on the prison hulk Justitia, uh, probably for disciplinary reasons. So, he was still being a tit bag while in custody, uh, a prison hulk was like a temporary jail made out of an old ship that was too shitty to use in war, but was still able to float. So it was basically a floating bucket full of prisoners and rats. Sounds like this hulk sounds incredible. It was pretty incredible, yeah, yeah. Uh, so for some reason the justitia was destroyed by fire. Uh, they were moved to the defense for a year, which is another prison hulk, uh, until Joey Joe was chucked on the prison ship Pyrenees to be transported to the British penal colony <laughs> of Western Australia to serve out the rest of his sentence. Willie Cross stealing from Dick Price mm. and goes to a penal colony? No, well, Willie Cross did go to a penal colony, but he went to a different one. Okay. He was sent to Tasmania. Oh, shit. Sucks to be him. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they do have the Cadbury factory there and a lot of really nice landscapes, but nah. Just as as well for our foreign listeners, the uh, Cadbury factory, not a euphemism. Other people have Cadbury chocolate in their countries. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but like, um, oh, you know, after a few drinks, I might... Uh, give up a visit my... to the, take a visit to the Cadbury factory. I might give up my Cadbury factory. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, so Joe <laughs> arrived in Fremantle uh, in April 1853, and he was given a ticket of leave for good behaviour because apparently Willie Cross was a bad influence, and Joe was actually a pretty top guy away from him. And in Fremantle, not far from where we are now, like no. you know, just a nip, 
nip down the highway. Yes, a little nip and a tuck down the highway. About so. 15 minutes drive, I reckon. No, I'd probably go a little bit longer, but sure, depending on your traffic. So tickets of leave were granted uh, basically because the colonial government didn't want to pay to feed their shitbag convicts. So the slightly less shitbag convicts who were deemed to be able to support themselves and get a job and stuff could go off and live their lives as long as they didn't leave a certain district. So they could marry and own property, but they couldn't carry a firearm or board a ship and they had to go to church, which is like, that kind of sucks. And they had random cheese inspections. (laughs) Yeah, they did. They did. did. Uh, And then if they stuck to the rules of uh, their ticket for at least half of their sentence, then they were entitled to a conditional pardon, which lifted all of the restrictions apart from the one about being able to leave the colony. So Joe received his conditional pardon in 1855 and settled in the Avon Valley, which is a lovely part of the earth now, but back then was considered to be one of the most rugged and inaccessible places in the Darling Range. And it's probably pretty shit to live in, to be fair. Yes. Uh, the Aboriginal name for the area was Moondine. Ah. ah. I see what's happening there. Uh, he made a living by building fences and trapping livestock and horses and stuff that had gone missing from their owners. He was hungry enough to eat a horse. Yeah, well, he may well have been. So in 1861, he caught an unbranded stallion and branded it with his own mark, which, in the eyes of the law, was horse stealing and they don't like fucking horse stealers uh and the police were just absolutely beside themselves just thrilled to be able to arrest this criminal that had come to live in their town uh because they'd you know they'd been sussing him out and going fuck you profiling profiling cops uh he was he was taken to the 2j lockup uh but sometime during the night he broke out he re-stole the horse that was you know being also being held at the police station and He stole the magistrate's brand new saddle and bridle. So just like middle fingers up at everybody. He's like, well, I'm going to steal this fucking horse back and I'm going to steal your shit. And your wig. Yes. He he was uh, caught uh, wearing the wig. He's Uh, like Australia's Mr. Toad, this guy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, He was caught the next day, but by the time they found him, he'd killed the horse and cut the brand out of its skin. So... Due to lack of evidence, they couldn't ping him for the horse stealing, but they could get him for jailbreaking, which was a significantly smaller sentence. Because he would have gone for like, you know, 10 years or so for the horse stealing, but he was just in prison for a couple of months because he broke out of jail. Uh, So Joe did his time, uh, but he just could not catch a fucking break as a big old cow ended up dead a year after he was released from prison. And everyone just automatically assumed that he did it. Uh, he was found guilty, even though he was like, I did not kill the cow, your this, honour. This is the Australian cereal <laughs> right really, now. It really what is. What you're doing. <laughs> um, and he was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years penal servitude. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he thought that was total bullshit and he escaped. Uh, he was on the run for nearly a month, uh, just doing a few robberies along the way. Ten years of penal servitude. What was he? Married. Uh... <laughs> uh, it was during this time that he first got stuck with the name Moondine Joe. He was caught, sentenced to 12 months in irons, and transferred to Fremantle Prison. Which, uh, you know, you can still go to today. You can go and have a look around there. Yeah, absolutely. It was only closed as an actual prison in, like, the 80s or something. Yeah. Yeah, like, not actually very long ago. And you go in there and you sort of think, my God, how can they actually keep people? The cells are so tiny. Yeah. But anyway. But they were criminals. They were, they were so, criminals, yeah. Fuck those guys, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. And it's haunted. Is it haunted, the Frio prison? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, um... So when that's I was... probably where... Well, I don't know how this ends, but maybe yeah. his ghost is there. Mm, we'll maybe. find out. We will find out. When I was at, when I was at high school, we, um... Uh, we went to Fremantle for a photography uh, excursion. Yeah. And we ended up at the Fremantle prison, just a few of us, and it turned out that uh, one of the tour guides for that day was our actual school chaplain, who none of us had ever visited for, for obvious reasons. Yeah, and, um, would have melted. <laughs> yeah, and she saw our, like, leavers jumpers and she went, oh, do you want, like, a private tour? And so she just took us wherever. We were like, can we open up that door? And she's like, sure. So we just went everywhere. We went to, like, the, the gallows, like, everywhere, everywhere. It was sweet. We mm. didn't take many photos, but we, we saw a bunch of stuff. So Joe, still extremely salty about serving time for a crime he swore he didn't commit, 
He cut off his irons and managed to escape again. This guy is a Houdini. He sure is. Uh, He knew he'd get caught by the police eventually if he didn't try something pretty drastic. So he made plans to escape to the colony in South Australia. Which, like, dude, is that much better? Um, That's a big hike across a desert. Yeah, it sure is. Um, He did lots of robbing to make sure that he and his gang were equipped for the journey. Like, he even... He knocked off the shop of one of his, like kind of rivals like one of this guy had like set up a business for himself yeah. he's trying to turn his life around and Moondyne Joe just came in and fucked up his shop to the point where he couldn't reopen it and he just lost all his business so that was like not super cool by Moondyne Joe but eventually Joe was caught by the cops on uh, a fantastic day the 29th of September 1866 gotta love that 29th of September what a great day I can't um, think of anything special about it. Yeah. Uh, 300 k's northeast of Perth. So he'd got a pretty decent way out yeah. of Perth. And I don't know if he's on a horse. I don't know if he's walking. But still, 300 k's. It's a I fair like effort. 300 k northeast of Perth's not going to get you to South Australia. No, it's not. But he might have been cut, You know, going up and across. And I mean, you don't want to follow the coast, do you? Yeah, I'd probably want to follow the coast rather than be in the middle of a desert. Yeah, but... The police would be less likely to want to follow you out into the desert, wouldn't they? Yeah, because you're going to be dead. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, he was not dead. He was caught. Um, he was returned to Fremantle Prison and received five years hard labour on top of his existing sentence. So the prison people were just sick to their tits with this guy making an <laughs> idiot of them by escaping all the time. So Sick to their tits. <laughs> the Joe Moondine story. <laughs> or the Moondine Joe, even. Moondine Joe. So he was kept in the prison yard with his neck chained to the iron bar of a window while they made a special escape-proof cell for him. Uh, the stone-walled... They put a door on it. Yeah, 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 they did do that. The stone-walled cell was lined with Jarrah sleepers and over a thousand nails and was almost airproof and lightproof. Joe was kept in the cell on a bread and water diet and was only allowed to leave the cell for one to two hours per day. So unsurprisingly, the now 41-year-old Joe's health went to absolute shit. He's my age. Mm. And my health's going to absolute (laughs) shit. And uh, so he was set to work uh, breaking stones out in the nice fresh air. But because they couldn't risk the wily bugger leaving the prison grounds to smash the stones, they bought... uh, He was wily. He sounds like the sort of guy that would get a crate with Acme Mm. on it and then, like, have roller, like, rocket skates or something and then burst out of the jail. He definitely would. Uh, So basically they had to bring in stones for him to smash and they dumped the stones in the corner of the yard where he could work under supervision so governor john hampton was so confident in this setup that he said to mooney joe if you get out again i will forgive you and mooney joe said challenge accepted fuckface john ham turn yes Ooh, maybe, maybe John Hamm could play him in the movie. Uh, yeah, a ton of him. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind a ton of John Hamm, honestly. Ooh, Zinder likes John Hamm. Well, don't you like John Hamm? Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, he's cool. Uh, the pile of rocks that Joe broke was supposed to be removed at the end of each day, but the guards were lazy pricks, and eventually the pile of rubble grew so large that Joe was obscured from their view. So from that point on, it was one whack for the stones, one whack for the limestone wall of the exercise yard. So the dead shit guards didn't even realise he was gone until they went to bring him in at 5pm and saw a dirty great big hole in the wall. So he'd escaped into the superintendent's backyard, let himself out a side gate and pissed off into the bush. You can't keep a good Joe down. (laughs) Absolutely. So... He laid low for like two years and no one was able to find him because he was, you know, he was just chilling out. He thought that he, he didn't deserve to be in prison. This was bullshit. He's just having a laugh, he, hey? was just, he was having a laugh. Like, he hasn't really hurt anybody. He likes a you bit know? of cheese. Who doesn't at 2.30 in the morning? Exactly. So, yeah, Fuck. up to this point, he hasn't really hurt anybody except ruined that business of that one guy yeah. that he didn't really like. Like, he, he's just trying to live his fucking life. He's just trying to be a free spirit. Yes. Okay, he cut the bum off a horse. So what? Well, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he did that. I mean, that wasn't very nice for the horse. A cow died. But, yeah, a cow died that may or may not have been uh, related to him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no one was able to find him until 
he tried to steal some piss from the Horton Winery. <laughs> so he was down in the cellar, and uh, when he heard the owner come down, he thought, oh, Jesus Christ, what am I going to do? Well, it's just one guy. I'm just going to try and push past him and then run off. Um, so he's just going to make a dash to the door and push his way out. But unfortunately, the winery owner had invited some local police officers who'd been working in the area back to his place for a drink. So Joe pushed push past the owner of the winery only to run into a whole bunch of police. Uh-oh. He got nicked again. I would think as well. See, I wouldn't try and push past someone from a winery because they would carry around big barrels. They would probably got big guns. Well, he was the owner of the winery. So if you're the owner, wouldn't you employ people to carry all your barrels and stuff? Some like barrel carriers. Yeah, barrel I guess carriers. So. Yeah, yeah. Pay a young lad a shilling to carry your barrels. Carry me barrels, boy. <laughs> so he was taken back to prison because no one believed his story about the governor saying that he could go free. And he was sentenced to like another five years mm. or something. So he made one last escape attempt by trying to craft a key for for his cell in the carpenter's workshop. So he's doing woodwork and he's just like casually making a fucking key. (laughs) And everyone just went, oh, that's fine, dude. Making an aeroplane. (laughs) Yeah, with a pop-out key in it. Um, His ruse was discovered, but he managed to throw the key over a wall before he could get in any real trouble. Because as we've established, the guards are pretty lazy and they probably couldn't be bothered just like, you know going outside and looking for it they just went oh well it's gone isn't it probably like probably seagull came and picked it up and ate it or something yeah yeah probably so they just they just left him so eventually in 18 april 1871 after joe had been back in jail for two years uh the comptroller general wakeford heard about this promise that the governor had made and he spoke to the superintendent who went oh oh yeah shit actually i do remember that (laughs) Um, and Moontime Joe was given his ticket of leave May 19... Oh, sorry, 1871. What the fuck have I written there? He was um, a man of his word, <laughs> He was governor. He was uh, stayed in jail for another 100 years. Uh, 1871, yeah. <laughs> at the age of 45, he was released. That's prime time for mischief still. Well, I mean, it is. Naughty but, 40s. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's halfway through the naughty 40s, so I don't know how much he can... Uh, he can really get up to so joe was in and out of trouble with the law for some pretty minor offenses after that and he did end up in prison again for like a month but he married a 26 year old bird when he was in his 50s and she seemed to keep him pretty busy because he quietened down a lot after oh, that Betty, oh bet she did <laughs> she wow. uh she kept those uh those old bones very limber and together they discovered Moondyne Cave in Augusta. I bet they did, which, according to Wikipedia, has a pothole entrance, a length of 270 metres, and has some large dry chambers. Sounds like their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's uh, the highlight of his marriage, finding a fucking cave. Well, you know, everyone has their interests. Yep. In, uh, yeah, look, this is before television. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in 1900, when he was well into his 70s, Joe was found wandering the streets of South Perth and was taken into custody for being of unsound mind. The poor old bugger was suffering from senile dementia, but was sent to prison again after escaping three times from the medical facility they tried to send him to. You know, you can't uh, you can't keep an old dog down. You know, no he's way. he's he like he's he's got dementia. He's incarcerated somewhere, and so he's just like, I need to escape. Like that's just what I do. I just escape from he things. He's so, crafty. So like yeah, this is this old seventy year old bloke, and he's just escaping after escaping after escaping. Uh, he's, he's slippery. He mm. must be very like slender and greasy. <laughs> he must be. He's very. He's a very moist. Oh. He's a very moist chap. Moon dines in the vents. He's in the pipes. <laughs> I can hear him sliding around. Uh, so he was it was actually sent back to Fremantle Prison for one month at the age of 70. And uh, then he was moved to the Fremantle Lunatic Asylum, which is now the Fremantle Art Centre. <laughs> so, yeah. 
uh, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, there will be a future episode on the Fremantle Arts Centre because uh, that is fucking haunted and that's a pretty interesting uh, spot there. But uh, Don't you uh, love the, the name Lunatic Asylum? Mm, yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a lot of pretty, pretty hairy stuff that went down there, but uh, that's not for this episode. That's for a future episode. So... He was moved to the uh, the lunatic asylum and died five months later, sadly. Uh, and he was uh, so he, that's where his ghost is. Yes, so he was buried on the fifteenth of August, nineteen hundred, in a pauper's grave in Fremantle Cemetery. And there was some Welsh writing on it, which means freedom in the Welsh language. But I can't pronounce like hardly any Welsh stuff, so it started with an R. That's about all I've got from that one. People don't know a pauper's grave in Australia is an old tin of Milo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or like one of the old um, biscuit tins, an old Arnott's biscuit tin. With the Rosella on it? Yeah, yeah. That's only if you're particularly, like, that wealthy, sounds, though. Yeah, that sounds a bit fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was if you were quite wealthy, you got the, the Arnott's tin with the Rosella. But if you were poor, it was a, a Milo tin. And not even one of the big ones. No. Like, one of the little ones. No, because if you had, like, a big Milo tin, you'd make stilts, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, or for a telephone. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So that is the Moondyne Joe story. Like, he's a pretty chill bush ranger. Yeah, I like, it sounds to me like he's just having a bit of a lark and he likes to eat. Pretty much, yeah. He's not like a, you know, a big troublemaker, a big rabble rouser like Ned Kelly. No, he's not shooting like cops in the dick or anything. No, absolutely he's just not. just like having some bread and cheese and some bacon and, but he yeah. should have had a sandwich shop. Absolutely, yeah. He's just He was just minding his own business and then suddenly it's all about these penal colonies and he ends up in a lunatic asylum. He liked eating cheese and making holes. Absolutely. And, like, I don't isn't see... Isn't it all... That's all we can ever wish for in life, isn't it? Any problem with that at all. No. A, a true bloody Aussie legend hero, fair dinkum. Absolutely, yes. And they still have, uh, at the Fremantle prison, they still have his escape-proof cell... As it was back in the day, and you can visit it. Uh, I mean, it was fairly escape-proof. He didn't technically escape from his cell. He escaped uh, by cutting a hole in the incredibly soft rock that they used to uh, keep the prisoners in the prison, which is probably a a structural error on their part. The whole uh, prison, and this is a famous fact about the Fremantle uh, jail there, is that it is ringed uh, by marshmallow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had to import all the marshmallow. It was a big uh, kind of political thing at the time. People didn't think that the government should be spending so much money on marshmallows. Yeah. Um, and it's still, you know, it's still taught in uh, in West Australian history classes today. Debated, should we have got the marshmallows? Should we have not? Um, yeah, it's a very divisive issue here in, in Western Australia. Uh, they had to do something with it once it arrived. Well, yeah, I mean, what else are you going to do with it? Eat them? Fuck that. So you know what I'm going to ask? Is there a movie? Is there a Moon Dine movie? If not, why not? And who's going to star in it? Yeah, I don't think there's a modern one. There might have been one like a really, really, really long time ago. Um, but no, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like maybe the Moon Dine Joe story has those kind of exciting beats that perhaps Ned Kelly or uh, you know Captain Captain Moonlight or. Is it Ben Hall? Ben Hall had, you know, they didn't kill anybody. They didn't go out in a blaze of glory. He just kind of, he wanted he wanted some cheese. He wanted some bread. He wanted some wine. He's a man of simple interests. But that's relatable. Oh, it, it, I know it is, it is know, pretty relatable. It's but there's, really there's relatable. no real action there. Yeah, but there? in the hands of the right director, like, you know, um, Shawshank Redemption, it's just oh, about yeah. digging a hole. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. People yeah. love things about digging holes. Mm, yeah. Maybe you should uh, just quickly Google Moondyne Joe and see what see what the old champ looks like because he's a pretty uh, pretty wily looking, looking oh, fella. Oh, okay, that might help with the casting. Yeah. Because it shouldn't be John Hamm. It should be a, it should be an Aussie legend. Mm. And he's, he's got a hat. His hat was a big part of his uh, his sort of outfit and costume. What? A, he does belong in a lunatic asylum. <laughs> Look at this guy. Well, I mean, that's when he's quite elderly, and that's probably when they took his uh, his sort of not not mugshotty kind of thing, but his portrait before they chucked him in jail. He's wearing like a frock coat made out of spotlight toy fur. <laughs> it's like he's you know, got a little wooden hatchet. He looks like he's just skinned some teddy bears. <laughs> And there's a drawing of him here, and it looks like he's got candles on top of his head. Uh, 
Yeah, he was an interesting looking chap. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe like, is that is that a Mendo thing? Oh yeah, it could be Mendo. Could be. I think you probably need someone a bit younger because they're going to have to play the the range. Uh, Look, you know, an Edjo or Weno, anyone could do it. He is a bush ranger, according to this wanted poster here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or was it just a, a misspelling on the the wanted poster? He's got no. He's got he's got a shock of red hair. Oh, okay. There yeah. you go. Yeah, he's a bit ringy. All right. Well, there you go. So that's 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 it. That's, that's Moondyne it. Joe. I mean, you know, not exciting, but relatable. Not many dicks, but you know, there were there were some. He must have had. He must have had one. I imagine that he had one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there was no reports of uh, of children or anything with his twenty six year old uh, wife, so maybe he didn't. Who knows? There was a movie called Moondyne, starring George Bryant as Joe Moondyne, and uh, it came out in nineteen thirteen. Oh right. Yes. Yeah. yeah right. So. So I think we're due for one. First of September, nineteen thirteen. Never forget. <laughs> So that is us uh, for this time around. Uh, you can find us every fortnight, obviously. You'll know that. You're listening to us. Uh, and at fruitlesspursuits.com, you can find all our other stuff, all the other shows, FP Cast, the weekly pop culture show, Dungeons & Drongos, the weekly Dungeons & Dragons Fantasy Australia podcast thing. And we will see you next week. And are you going to say what it is? Or is it a secret? It's not a secret, but I think I'll keep everyone guessing. So it's a secret. It's, it's kind of a secret. There's a Moondying Joe's Pub and Bistro in Fremantle. There is, yes. Oh, well, fuck, we should have recorded there. We could have, uh, but bars are not the best place to record podcasts. Good place to eat chips, though. It is a very good place to eat chips, yes. And uh, you can get chips there by looking. And it. maybe cheese and bread. And some wine. I mean, that's why it's Moondying's favourite shop. And then uh, it's an... Um, inescapable pub and you have to dig a hole yeah it's one of those escape rooms yeah and you can't leave unless you uh, oh. get all the tricks and stuff sounds so good yeah alright yeah well that's it we'll uh, see you next time badonkadonk